Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Stogie Geeks, welcome back to episode three, where are we, 343. <laughs> I am your host, Joe Zempa. This is the Sticks of the Week. Nelson and I are going to express what we have been smoking here uh, on Stogie Geeks and give it our rating. And Nelson, you can go first. Oh, thank you. You know, the sacrifices we make for you guys in trying these different sticks. Um, I always try to try something different, and I always try to try, I try to smoke two or three before we do these so uh this week i'm going to be bringing up one of the yummy bitches if you know uh if you're familiar with deadwood they have the uh the three yummy bitches it's um the fat bottom betty crazy alice the third one's escaping me joe help me out what's the third one i know as soon as you say yummy bitches i tune out i so. I, for, I forget but i tr- i tried the crazy alice um these sticks are very popular um a lot of them are selling out in different retailers. So uh, it's a four by f- uh, four and a half by 52 stick. It's made by Deadwood Tobacco. Uh, not a lot of information on the wrapper binder filler. They just say that it's an exotic mix of binder filler tobaccos. Um, it is a dark Maduro wrapper. So, you know, there's that. Uh, as far as appearance, it's, as I said, it's a dark Maduro wrapper, minimal veins, but it's a short stick anyway. Uh, it had a pigtail cap, which I actually kind of like on on sticks now. Uh, it's you can almost bite it off, and you're already you're ready to smoke it. But it, and it also had a closed foot. It had the wrapper um, around the foot too, which is kind of cool. You can smoke it right off the riff. Uh, it is listed as a robusto, although it's not what you would consider a traditional robusto. It's not even five inches um, long. It looks, I don't want to say exactly. I'll say similar to a nasty fritta. Um, it's a cone-shaped cigar. Um, it on the cold draw and on just smelling it, uh, you would think this sucker's infused. So I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, they claim Deadwood claims it is not infused, but when you first take that puff and even on just smelling it and even on the cold draw, you're going to swear this sucker's infused. So I don't know what's going on here. But they definitely claim it's not infused. They just claim it's uh, a lot of people liken it to pipe tobacco, which is more aromatic. So that, that's kind of what they, they say it is. Uh, so even though it's like the Nasty Fritta, that's, it's just an appearance. Other than that, it's nothing like the Nasty Fritta. Uh, so the first half, I will say this thing produces a lot of smoke. A lot of smoke. Um, not overwhelming, but more than your typical cigar. And more you would expect from such a small stick. Uh, but, you know... I actually wrote down in my notes, but bam, like that, as soon as I started smoking that sucker, tons of sweetness. I mean, just overwhelming sweetness. And again, not infused, natural tobacco sweetness, apparently. Um, very aromatic. So it actually, as you're smoking it, even the smoke becomes part of the experience um, because of how it smells. So that combined with the notes you're getting, um, super, super sweet in the beginning. Um, as I got into the second half, the... I'll call it candy-like sweetness sort of muted a little bit. It wasn't super strong like it was in the beginning. Uh, And I started to get a little more, uh, some coffee notes in there with the sweetness, which was actually, that part was actually kind of nice. And then as I got into, I don't want to call it the third half because the sixth is so damn small. Sure. um, You can't say it's it's three-thirds, but whatever. Uh, In the finish, I'll call it, in the finish, um, it picked up again with the, the sweetness came back again. Um, so not my kind of thing. I'll be honest. Just, I'm not like a sweet infused again, not infused, but not that type of person. So I would say try one because it's definitely different. Uh, so I'd give it a Stogie Geeks rating of a try one. Okay. It's a lot of buildup for a try one. I like it. I know it was. Well, hey, hey it was. Drew does that a lot. It was a journey, like, dude. It, like, it was. This, <laughs> this, this shit was a journey. I was like, "What's right. happening here?" Never smoked anything like this. Yep. It was. It was totally different. 
Yep. They, you know, you can, you know, that's the second stick that you reviewed um, of late that uh, consumers have said, uh, you know, it's got to be infused. It's got to be infused. It's got to be infused. And it's not, you know. Oh, the brulee. Yeah. I think, I think that, you know, it's because it's super sweet. Like tobacco has a lot of flavors. And, um, for those of you who don't know, outside of Stogie Geeks, I am a uh, entrepreneur in residence for a pipe tobacco company. So um, you know it, it, and so obviously when I go and do my work over there uh, for my business, I take out the pipe and you know test the blends, and you know you're using, you, you know you're packing the bowl, of the pipe, and. And doing that there, and then you have a soft flame. You don't want to ever do a torch with the pipe. And you do a soft flame, and you're like, oh, my God. Like, this is, like, coming from a cigar smoker. Now, is pipe tobacco smoking my 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 bag? No. Uh, it, it, we live in the Northeast. So, like, winter months, absolutely. Like, absolutely. You know, you stand outside. You smoke your bowl. You hang out. It's not as long as a cigar. Yeah. Or, you know, you have that there. The aromatic aspect of it is a little less um, invasive than a cigar there. Um, you know, and, and the point is you're having tobacco that's not infused, and you're tasting, like, pure chocolate or you're tasting pure cherry like a cherry cabin yes and you're tasting there like i could do a whole podcast on on the pipe stuff right and it's like if you've experienced that with the pipe then you say okay i believe that it's not infused you know what i mean and and so that that you know um if they say it's not infused it's not infused and and that's up for them to yeah um, yeah that's interesting i i bet you pipe smokers would Say, oh no, that's that's natural tobacco. Yeah, oh that's yeah, that's where that sweetness is coming yeah. from. Yep, yep, and and you can get like crazy sweetness. Um, when I owned the cigar shop, we used to have on one side of the of the walk in, we had um, we had an L shaped humidor. So you have all humidor and cabinets, and then L, mm-hmm. and then you know TV walk through hallway bathroom, and on the other side we had all pipe tobacco stuff. And people would come and type pipe tobacco, and they would do blending seminars. The old timers would come because we had like a natural wooden bowl, and they would make all different blends. I've talked about this a couple times in the show, but they would make a natural wooden bowl and do like a testing. And they'd be like, "Oh, can we use your shop to do a testing? I want to do a bowl." I was like, "Yeah." And then like what they would do is they would do it enough to fill like those jaws that are front and facing. Those little. I don't know what those jars are called. They're glass jars, right? And they would make it. We would sell it by the ounce. And the thing is, like, it would switch every month. So all the pipe tobacco smokers would come. They'd have the blending of the day. And then they'd buy their, you know, two ounce, four ounce, sure. six ounce, or, or a pound, whatever they wanted to. And then they would get that. And then it's amazing how you can see all the different blends switch and how they they cure it in a bowl. I mean, it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not much of a cook. But you know how you take like the if you were to take a walk and like you know like shuffle it around, right, right, you're you know, flipping whatever, it, yeah. whatever. I don't know what that's called, but <laughs> well, whatever that's called, it's super <laughs> cool to watch, right? No, because your old time is like doing all that out there. You mean. But yeah. but but the point is, you're gonna get like a really cool, super cool sweetness, um, and and so uh, it cannot be infused. How to replicate that with cigars? I would imagine that it, it's it's within the filler, coming from just putting those two worlds together. And seeing a, a cigar being constructed, it's got to be in the filler, yeah. in my opinion. And then you get a mix of uh, sprinkle that stuff all around, and away you go. You can get some sweet flavors. So what do you have, Joe? What am I smoking now? No, what are you reviewing oh, today? I'm sorry. Oh, um, <laughs> I, 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 I freaking love this stick. It's the Tatuaje Black Petite Lancero. Um, Rapid Mind of Filler is all in Nicaragua. Complexity, flavor, and balance. Complexity, if you retro hail. I give it a nine. Flavor and balance, I give it nines. It's just so super good. When you first start off, you get super strong pepper and spice. Then it calms down, and it just settles into something just really special. That's all I got to say. Like, that's my description of the stick. That was your experience. That's my experience. Um, absolutely a fan of the brand, for sure. 
And that being said, I mean, I gave it a box worthy. Um, I've Paul has some in his humidor, not the petite black lanceros, but they're petite. They're not. They're like Corona size, and oh man, it, they, you barely get a bullet cut into them. But if you can be careful and 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 get the bullet cut into them, and they're they're so friggin' tasty. Um, I'm again that 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 petite black line, um, from. Tatuaje, I absolutely positively love it. Doesn't let you down. No, no, abso- absolutely not. It's super cool um, there. What I'm smoking now is I'm actually smoking. This is the Robusto version of the Master Blends that we've been promoting last month. Oh, the Oliva. The Oliva. Yeah, I like that. Dude, have you had? Uh, I gave you some. Did you have those yet? I, I have to tell you, I'm, I don't normally smoke Olivas, but I did, as Joe said, he had given me a couple of uh, the Master's Blend. Mm-hmm. And I was surprisingly impressed. Dude, I, I, I did like the Masters blend. I mean, you know, uh, I've said on record here on the show, so I'm not afraid to say it. Oliva, I'm like Gilberto Oliva or Milanio. But this this here, this is, um, and, and I've confirmed this with uh, sources at Oliva, right? This is uh, constructed exclusively for Holtz in, in their... Uh, so when they do their master blend series for yeah. whatever orders that they need to fulfill in there, it is different than a regular lever that you would get in a store. I mean, I'm looking at it now. It even has a great, there's a great razor sharp, almost a razor sharp burn there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it did. I had the same experience. I've been bull cutting these and enjoying these and, you know, uh, I've even went to Paul during our weekly shuffle of business I'm like, hey man, check out these oh, those little leaves. I'm like, nah, you got. It. <laughs> I know, I was the same way. Like, it's different though. It, it, it's not it's like their different. regular line no, of, of sticks. Not. No, not at all. It's not. It's um. It reminds me of the description of how I gave the the Gilberto Oliva. Uh, it, it's just classic old school. I'm not saying that the other Oliva's, but I'm just not into like the O. And the other ones, V. I'm just, well, that's, just not that's my, my thing. And not I, my back. I, I'm okay. I don't mind the Milanios. I'll smoke them. Um, but I definitely, if I had to pick an Oliva, it would be the Masters Blend. Yeah. I was just. I don't think it's like anything else in their line. It's not. It's not. And 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 when I first had it, from when we did the promotion, because all that time, Stogie Geeks, I was showing you a brick. I did take three out. <laughs> To test it before, maybe a few missing. All right, uh, to 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 test it before, but I kept the brick together for a while. Well, now we've dis- we dismantled the brick and 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 we're smoking them and enjoying them. And I'm just like, wow! Like for those Stogie geeks who got in on that action from that promo, uh, I I think that that they're not going to be disappointed at all. It's a super cool um, price bundle. That will add a little bit of volume and substance to your humidor. And it's slightly different than... And it is completely different than what you would get in a brick and mortar. And it doesn't break the bank either. No, no, no. no. It doesn't but, break the bank. You know, but yeah, so absolutely. But that, that's how I'm smoking right now. I like absolutely. how you shoehorn two reviews into one. I like that. Well, you know, I'm good. It's I your like show. Well, it's <laughs> not my show. It's a listener's show. Right? <laughs> we established that last week. Um, what else have you been smoking? Avo. Avo. I know he hates when I say that. I just did it on purpose. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> the uh, Avo is quickly becoming my new favorite line. Um, I was actually telling Joe before the show, huge fan of their Ritmo South American. Really good stick. Uh, if you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. But they just came out with um, two new additions to their uh, regional edition. Um, last year they came out with the East West. This year they came out with the North South. So. Um, I am today reviewing the Avo Regional North Edition. Um, actually got it the beginning of the week, I think. Just grabbed it. Um, actually called. I had called some retailers because it was coming out in August. And I had called around trying to find them. And apparently there was delays in shipping. And a lot of, guy, a lot of retailers that were going to get it in September didn't get it. But starting in October, it started to creep in. So I did find a retailer finally that had them so you know 
if you can't find them, they're coming. Believe me, I, I am aware of the, some of the delays. But so I tried the um, the Avo Regional North Edition. It's a and I love Perfectos. I think I might have said that on the show before. I'm a huge fan of Perfectos. So it's a six and five eighths by fifty Perfecto. Uh, retails for about fourteen dollars. That seems to be the the average price. It's a Dominican Pudo and with an Orlo Seco binder uh, and a Saint Vincent filler, which is from Northern Dominican, hence um, Avo Regional North Edition. Um, I thought this was a great smoke, and literally, I've never taste the notes I've tasted. And I was talking to Joe; he can attest to this before the show. Um, there was one note in there that I kept getting, and I, I just could not put my finger on it. But I'll talk more about that. Um, so great ash. I mean, the the ash buildup on that sucker, that thing was built perfect for smoking. Um, average smoke on it. Um, I had one touch up, which actually I'm going to attest might be user error myself because I talked too much and I think it might have just gone out. But <laughs> just being honest, just total transparency. I'm being honest. Um, I got uh, a creamy start to it. It was very creamy in the beginning, which, you know, it was a, it's a lighter wrapper on it. So that didn't surprise me too much. And then I got some, some notes of um, hay in there, a little earthy hay going on in there. And then, again, as I'm saying, that there's a note in there. You know, I'm just going to say it, and people are going to ridicule me for it, and I don't care. It, it was like an ocean note. It just reminded me of the ocean. I don't know what it could be. But it was like an ocean note. That's what I was getting. S- seaworthy. Salty? It wasn't salty. It was like the ocean seafoody. I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I, I got again. I'm going to talk. the The score I gave was based on that note. Yep. It's literally based on that note. It left you wanting more. Exactly. Sure. I haven't had that yet, so I'm looking based upon what, what you've told me off air. I'm very intrigued. Yeah. So it gained a little pepper in the middle. Um, it was a little less creamy, and, and the pepper came back a little bit. Um, and then I got a little bit of citrus also on the second third, which was nice. That was actually a, a, a nice pickup there. And then the finish, um, I got a stronger pepper, uh, peppery note on the end. And then that mystery note came back. So it was, I got it in the beginning. It was more subtle in the middle. And then at the end, I got that. Gordon's Fisherman <laughs> note, whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't right. know. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. So, I mean, to me, this was a complex stick. I, it took me for a ride. This sucker took me for a ride. I had n- not like any other cigar I've ever smoked. I'm not saying it's the best cigar I ever smoked. I'm just saying I've never smoked a cigar like this. So Joe hit it on the head. Um, for me, uh, this is a, a box split. I'm going to give it more than a try one. Like I want more of these. I definitely want more of these. So I'm giving it a box split. I, I got to get to the bottom of what the hell that mystery note is. Mm. Mm. Well, I, I like to break things down and find out what's unique about the stick. And then from there, uh, try to find some that are kind of mimic that. The yeah. other brand names. I've never well. had anything like this. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Your palate your pal- to judge thing. Um, I, I would venture to say that if you're gonna say seaworthy quote unquote yeah um there i mean if tobacconist university tells you that you only get f- f- five flavors um you know saltiness is one of them we, so maybe that's it, we, it, it, it uh, it's probably like a like a salty umami component that's making you go like what the heck is this and i mean i don't know if you saw i was sitting next to joe when i was smoking and i don't know if you saw i was like I was zoned in. Yeah, and no, I was working on some. I, I was some smoking crazy stuff. <laughs> I I did for you, Stogie Geeks, for you guys. I probably retrohaled twenty seven times this thing, trying to figure out what the hell that note was. Yep. Because it was just it it became like a, I I didn't have a choice. I just wanted to figure out what it was. Yeah. My next suggestion is when you have one, again, have it in the morning, and don't have it when you're doing work. Just focus on the stick. Just focus on the stick and, and enjoy that ride. And then tear apart the stick um, regionally and component-wise for yourself, for your own notes, not for Stoey Geeks. And then do a little bit of homework and try to find some other sticks that, that might mimic that. Yeah. And, and basically on the series, I mean, Avo's come up with some pretty creative stuff with the Ritmo series, right? Um, so, you know, it might not, but, you know, I you'll find some sort of a component in some sort of a self 
journey to answer from there. Right. You know what I mean? Without getting all philosophical. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm looking for, I mean, it just came out, so I'm looking forward to, you know, what other people are going to say about it, you know, what notes they say they're picking up. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm sure there'll be more to this story. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, anything else you want to add to that? No. Okay. Like I said, it's, a, cool. it's a box split. Try it. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying the South. So. It'd be interesting how you compare the north to the south, right? And and again, a lot of these times, like you know, with with COVID and everything, and stories, and 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 you know, cigar companies can take some time out to release the stories, but you know, get a little bit of regionally specific with some of their offerings, and you know, you might find out that you know, I'm a northern guy, like. Whatever's in the components of the northern, and you gotta smoke multiple to come to this conclusion. I'm not saying that you, this is this answer is gonna come to you over next week, but as you go through your smoker's journey and Stogie Geeks, you obviously go through your own journey. That you know, like you, you know, I'm a northern guy. That's like like me. Like people are like, well, you know, you you mention a lot of red wines with cigars. I get emails and stuff like that, and I said, yeah, well, I tried a Merlot, and then I'm like, well, have you tried a Melback? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay. Like, it, and then I always get the email. Well, it's a Merlot. I get that. But it's actually to geek out a little bit on wine. It's to, um, it's, it's to, it's, it's at the, it's a rockier soil at a higher elevation. So even though the process of making the Merlot is the same. So it's like, okay. So now I can legitimately say to story geeks if i'm pairing something and i think i did it on the last segment just subconsciously like freaking wet red wine like it's cabernet and melback like bang you yeah and, I mean? and that's what and, i like about the the regional editions that i was putting out is it it's different right mm-hmm. i mean literally north south east west you can try you know tobacco from these different regions yep it's it's pretty cool it is it's very cool and 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 the good news out about it is it's your journey of a palette of that you likes and, and, and right on and that's what I think is is super cool if you could break down those speaking of breaking things down um I had the Orte uh, the Ortega uh Series D Exclusivo and this is a uh, format is a Toro it's a uh it's a 6x52 and um the wrapper is Ecuadorian Habano but it's a Rosado wrapper. Note that for a second. Like those. And binder and filler on Nicaraguan. It's available in uh, six different sizes, 4.5 by 48, 5 by 46, 5 by 52, 5.5 by 50, 6 by 52, and then, of course, 6 by 60. I don't know how a 6 by 60 Rosado wrapper would taste, but, I mean, I do, but I, I, I'm not a, a 60 guy, right? Um, I had this in two different sizes. Four and a half by forty eight, and I had it uh, on the on the six by fifty two, and I got citrus and pepper. Seemed to be the primary notes in the beginning, and then um, in the middle, you start to get the caramel notes that come up in the background, and then the smoke moves, and you get like a woody pepper flavor towards the end. Stick is completely well balanced, and I bullet cut it, which I often do, but. Um, smoke this thing right down to the nub. Nice. And that being said, the reason why I, I think it was so succulent for me is the risotto wrapper. So it tells me, like, okay, so now I went on my own journey, right? I have, I like, I make a note, like I just said with Nelson. I like the risotto wrapper. And it's like, if you take a Arturo Fluente A58, and then you go Arturo Fluente A58 with the risotto wrapper. One of my favorites. It's freaking night and day. Oh, yeah. And so it tells me that I'm getting that flavor from that risotto wrapper. And that's my journey that that I like. And if you story geeks, in fact, the last time Paul was on a show was August of 2019. Um, we spoke about the the, the, the risotto wrapper. Yeah. Like the, of when we went it's to Casa wrapper. Fuente over in Vegas and all of that stuff. And, like, you know, you have them and you're like, dude, like the risotto wrapper is. And so I try to look out for sticks that have that risotto wrapper even though their mainstream stuff might might be in the in there like obviously Arturo Fluente you know makes ample amount of sticks but the risotto wrappers are like the ones you gotta really get them and that's the experience you get when you go into your tobacconist as opposed to either online is so because now you can say okay you know like what do you got in the risotto wrapper 
And if they don't know, then they should know. But that's another issue for another time. But that being said, the Ortega Series D Exclusivo, I mean, that's box split all day. Nice. And one of the reasons why I made it a box split is just simply because the trying to track that stick down could be a little bit of a challenge. Um, they're, they're not really readily available. At, in You're not going to walk into your local brick and mortar unless they're like all over it, um, you know, trying to get that there. And, and I don't like sending the uh, Stogie Geeks listeners on a wild goose chase. So uh, there you go. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about um, right before we take off is the uh, promotion. If you go to stogiegeeks.com and wait for the bands to flip, it might come up first, it might come up third. I don't know, right? There is a uh, Bricktoberfest for Oktoberfest that's coming out with our uh, partners over as J.C. Newman celebrates Bricktoberfest 2020. If you want the information, you click on that banner ad. Uh, there, sign up, you go and you tag onto uh, social media. Every week, J.C. Newman's giving out a different prize. You can follow J.C. Newman on social media as well and, and, and use the hashtags there. But if you click on the link, uh, during Bricktoberfest of 2020, it'll run from October 1st through October 31st. You can show your love for Brickhouse cigars and get into the Oktoberfest spirit. When you purchase seven brick house cigars at local retailers, you get a free brick house 2020 Stein uh, there. Then you can go in uh, the, the social media component. You post a picture of yourself celebrating your Bricktoberfest on social media on either Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, or all three. Um, use the hashtag Bricktoberfest uh, there. And you, again, um, You'll be wrapped up to win uh, weekly drawings. If you follow J.C. Newman uh, on any of their social media platforms, you'll you'll be able to see who won. Uh, I'm assuming that you might want to stay close to that if you participated in the program. But, again, you end up getting a Stein. You get some super cool sticks. We reviewed the Bricktoberfest here, obviously, in the past. Um, those sticks won't disappoint. And... Hey man, if you get a big Stein, then you can uh, you know fill it up with beer and that's yeah, not a they're bad. Cool. I've, I've seen the Stein. It's not a bad afternoon anyway. It's you know? a it's a good and I, you know what I will applaud J C Newman. They have one of the best social media presence of cigar brands. I mean they're very accessible. So I I, I get my hats off to J C Newman because I've posted a lot of stuff on Instagram and they've actually replied to me or commented or whatever. So hats off to them. They do a good job. But yeah, that Stein is badass. I I actually thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. And if you follow me on Facebook, Joe Hosempa, or uh, Twitter.com forward slash Joe Hosempa, um, I posted something on JC Newman too, and I'll just end you with this. They're doing a spooky series too of employees that, and, and they're only quick three to five minute snippets of videos yeah. of employees that have had, you know, you got to remember it's the oldest factory in, 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 in North America here, uh, it's the oldest factory. And they've reported some kind of spooky findings and whatnot in the spirit of Halloween oh, cool. and whatnot. Now, Zach from whatever that show is and, and all of that <laughs> isn't involved. Or anything. It's just employees saying that they've had. And, and I, 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 I guy, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just I just think it's just worth a quick watch for you to um, kind of do that and then check, check out. that out. I've shared it on my social media uh, there. Uh, if you're not on social media and you're listening or watching this, you can email me at joeh at com, Or if you go to uh, YouTube and go to the J.C. Newman page, subscribe to them. It'll come up in their videos, and away you go with that. Um, I just thought it was super cool. Halloween is coming. Right, yeah. Some people get rowdy with all of that type stuff. But I think, it, you know, like, you know, 125 years of a factory, you, you have some families that have, you know, now they have generational families. And it's funny because in the interview series, they actually interview the employee who says, you know, I'm third generation. My mother or father worked here and this is what they've experienced yeah. and stuff like that. I just think it's, it's just worth a share for you to check that out. And so did JC Newman because they shared that as well. So, um, hey, man, if you want some spooky stories from the oldest factory, it might be worth to check that out. Uh, Story Geeks, Nelson, thank you for appearing here again. Joe, thanks for having me. Get on Story Geeks. Uh, I want to thank uh, Raul a from uh, CLE for an awesome interview and an update 
of everything that has been going on with uh, CLE and Asylum and Winwood Hills and the Aurora brand. Uh, it's super cool. Remember, we keep the conversation going all week long. You can visit us at stogiegeeks.com. Email all of your complaints to Nelson at stogiegeeks.com. You can follow us over on Facebook. Um, that's where we're the most active. Instagram, not so much. Twitter, we do post all the shows and some upcoming stuff that has happened. Behind every cigar, I want to remind you that there's a story worth knowing. So get out there and find your own journey. Stogie Geeks, thank you very much for watching and listening. Special thanks to JC Newman Cigar Company, Havana Cigar Club, and Placencia Cigars. Stogie Geeks, we'll see you next week. Peace.